Greetings hobbyists, this is R Sands of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can cut apart and key a model together so that once we've 3D printed it, it's going to fit together nicely. So this is a really important element of 3D design and it is something that's best to think about from the beginning. For example, in this fancy building that we've been making together over some previous videos, we've taken a bit of a pause from it while we've talked about some other things, but if you want to go back and have a look at the playlist, there's a link in the top right hand corner. From the very offset, there were certain design elements here that was going to make this easy to cut apart. For example, we've got separate layers here, here, and then we'll have one at the top. And it was always designed with the idea that this was going to be cut apart at this point here. And because of that, we've got this slight overlap here or overhang of these wooden beams, which is going to hide this seam quite nicely. And the same, we've made sure that we've got these bricks so that the brick overhang is gonna hide the seam there as well. Now this isn't always possible with miniatures, but it is something to try and consider when it's being designed. Now in a future video, I will have a look at how we can cut and key more organic shapes, which are generally a little bit harder to do, but we'll start here so we can go through some of my suggestions of how to make this work. So what we're gonna do is focus on placing one key and how we're gonna design that to work the most effectively. And we're gonna have a look at this join here basically making sure that this chimney is going to line up fairly nicely. So let's isolate those two and we can start having a look at this. So the first thing I've done at this point is I've made sure if we go into x-ray mode, there is an internal wall here that you can see at this point and this point going down that is where we're going to be able to fit our key into it. Now this is important for this miniature because this is going to be a model that isn't actually going to get glued together. You could get away without keying this miniature if you're going to glue it together permanently. But to be honest, I'd probably still key it together anyway. But the idea is that we can take this off, put miniatures in it. Obviously there'll be a floor in this in real life. I've just left it off so it's easier for me to work on it. And then we can put that back on top. And as this won't be glued, we want it to nice and easily slot onto it each time we do so. So let's start having a look at how we're going to make a key and some of the really classic mistakes. The first thing we want to think about, I'm just going to bring in a cube and bring it over to here. We'll have to reposition it in a second, is we need to think about where this key is going to go. Is it going to be sticking out from the bottom section or is it going to be sticking out from the top section? Effectively, is this cube, let's just bring it over here. Let's scale that on everything but the X to get some idea of where it's going to go. Let's say somewhere about there and then lengthen it out here. So the question is, is this going to be part of the bottom section of the model? So sticking out like that doesn't need to be wider on the X. So let's go somewhere like there. Or alternatively, is it going to be part of the top section and it's going to slide into the base? Now there isn't really a right answer to this in this instance and most of the time there isn't. But I will say I would actually argue that it's going to be easier to have this as part of the base section just in terms of 3D printing because I'm probably going to 3D print this maybe not even at an angle and I'll just put some mud and things around the bottom if there's a little bit of overexposure on the base and this means it's going to be vastly easier to print this than it would be on the second layer to have something sticking out the bottom. So we'll stick with that in this case with the idea that this key is going to be protruding from the bottom and it's going to fit into the second floor. So I guess a good place to start would be to talk about shape. And the first thing that I want to say is that this shape, this cube here, would be an awful choice for a key. And there's a reason for that. Now this is sort of what we automatically go with in our heads. We think, oh yeah, this is gonna work perfectly fine. But once we've got the hole in the section above this, if I come inside view, we're going to have potentially two problems. Either this is going to have a hole in it that's going to be there and it's going to be very tight against it. And there's going to be a lot of friction acting against this, which means that when we're putting these models together, they're not going to go together very nicely. And they're potentially going to get stuck, which means we're going to have to force them apart. It's all not going to be very nice. What's also a problem is sometimes if this is going together and it got a lot of friction on it, it won't be until you get the second part of the model quite far down, let's say down to about there, that you realize that it's not going to go all the way on. And then you try to pull it apart and find that it's stuck. And then you start damaging the thing that you've just spent 15 hours printing. The other option is you have this much wider and then that means you've got a very loose fitting model and well effectively this key 
therefore doesn't have a point. So we want to avoid that. And one of the easiest ways to do that is actually just to take the top section here and then just S to scale that in. And we're probably gonna have to exaggerate that slightly more on the X axis to make this work. And then I'm just gonna go into X-ray mode and I'm gonna G and Z those bits up. So we've got something like this, basically a bit of a sort of trapezium shape. In fact, I'm actually gonna S and X those a little bit more there. So what this is gonna mean is that anything that fits together is going to fit together quite nicely because if you think about the shape of what's gonna be fitting into this, something like that, you never actually have a lot of friction acting upon it until the very end. Because if I grab this and move it down, at this point, there's no connection. We've got no friction to make this difficult to fit in. It's only when you get it towards that final point that you get the parts potentially touching and therefore you get a bit of friction. So it gives a much nicer fit. It's going to work much better as a key. And that's why most miniatures that you find that aren't something like high precision plastic will have these sort of shapes. So this is going to be our key for this section. And all we're gonna do is control and plus to use ball tools and boolean those together. And I'm going to apply that so that it's there and ready to go. Now at this point, we've still got our original cube, so we can still move that around. I've got that set to automatically be in wireframe. And then we want to make this a little bit larger and then we're gonna cut this out of the shape that's above it. And this is probably one of the biggest and most common questions that I get asked. If I'm gonna scale this up, let's actually just apply the scale because I haven't already, and start scaling this up, how much bigger do we want the hole that this lock is gonna go into? Now, I can't really give you a simple answer for that because it's gonna depend a lot on your 3D printer and how precisely you've got it dialed in. For example, for me, I know that generally I want a gap of about half a millimeter between the two parts so that I could get a good fit. So I'm just gonna press N, come to my dimensions here, and then on the X, I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna get plus 0 0.6. So in this, I don't have any units showing because I just used the blender units, but that'll be 0 0.6 millimeters. So that is going to be 0 0.3 millimeters either side. And then I want to increase this in size in the Z axis. I'm gonna go for plus 0 0.6. And again, that's gonna move that, but I've got my origin not in the center. So this hasn't actually done everything equally. So I'm actually just gonna quickly undo both of those, shift and S, and then bring my object origin to the geometry so it's in the middle. If you don't have machine tools, which that was using, you just need to go to object, set origin, and origin to geometry. So we'll go through that again. So what I want on the X is that plus 0.6. Then I want it on the X plus 0 0.6 as well. And then on the Z again, plus 0 0.6. And this should give me some pretty good clearance for when I'm fitting my model together. So let's go back into this view, grab that outer one and that, so we can come in here. And then all I'm gonna do is take this and then control and minus to Boolean that out of this object. So that's gonna be my first key. Now a quick other benefit that I wanted to mention in terms of this shape of it being not a perfect square is that this is actually very good for the structural rigidity of this model. Now obviously these are quite thick wall sections, but it does mean that you get much less area of weakness. Let's say this was a thinner wall because while we do have a thinner part here that is gonna be weaker and here, as soon as we get a little bit further up, this is going a lot wider, therefore it is going to be a lot stronger. So you've got a lot less chance of this model actually breaking. And if say someone hits this miniature, and let's quickly uh, smart apply that to get that combined together. Or if they're a bit careless when lifting this section up, we've not got these thin weak points that are very likely to break. So hopefully that gives you some useful ideas in terms of what to consider when creating keys and breaking apart models. Again, if you want something on more organic shapes, then do feel free to say in the comments section. I obviously want the channel to be as useful to you as possible, so there's no point in making a video that people aren't gonna be interested in.
If you do have any other questions, please do feel free to ask in the comments as well. And if you found the video useful, please do hit the like button. And if you aren't subscribed already, do subscribe to the channel for more great content. Have a great day, guys.